I have played Star Wars Outlaws. In fact, I've played a good bit of it. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And a few weeks back, Ubisoft reached out and gave me the chance to play four hours of what they're calling the first truly open world Star Wars game. Now, this could not have come at a better time. Number one, because I wanted to try out the game, but number two, because there's been some drama around an IGN first preview that they put up showing off the game, and it got flamed online. In fact, the reaction toward how the game looked was so negative that IGN even pinned a comment asking people to check their quality settings on YouTube. Obviously, I couldn't comment on the way the game looked or played at that point due to NDAs and embargoes, but the time has now come, so let's get into the hands-on experience of Star Wars Outlaws. For those that haven't caught up on the story of Star Wars Outlaws, the game is set at the height of the Empire between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And for a lot of longtime Star Wars fans, that's the meat of the Golden Age of Star Wars. But instead of focusing on a longtime fan favorite character as the protagonist, you play as Kay Vess. Now look, there's no getting around it. Kay Vess has her own personality, but the general vibe is a quirky Han Solo. And alongside Kay Vess, we've got Nyx, this kind of cat-like companion that's along for the ride and can help distract enemies or fetch items along the way. We'll get into that more in a minute. The gameplay session I had was split into two different parts, three hours early on in the game and an hour deeper in the story when we're getting to know the main villain, Sleero. Now this is a spoiler-free preview. Still, just a heads up if you're trying to go in flying blind. But if you're doing that, you probably shouldn't be watching a preview, now should you? Kay starts off by arriving on a planet with a broken down ship that needs fixing, and you set off the scavenge parts to find a way to get what you need to get off the planet. So you turn to the city of Miragana, your typical hive of scum and villainy kind of place. You've got your dive bar packed with shady bartenders, bounty hunting customers that have faction jobs, and a city crawling with gang-style faction members and Empire Stormtroopers. The entire game and story are really centered around this reputation system that's split between the different factions that exist in the universe. You do a quick job to earn some cash for ship parts and make a choice that builds a connection with a faction. But future choices that you make could hurt that relationship, but beef up your rep with another faction. And through the whole game, you're doing jobs, building trust with factions, and breaking alliances along the way that totally depend on the choices you make and how you want to play the game. Now, obviously, there are key main story missions that move you through the game, but you've also got side missions to take on and events that pop up as you're out there exploring the world. But overall, the character and world building that's going on here hits that cookie cutter Star Wars story that we've kind of come to expect. Rugged bartender with quest and questionable morals. Quirky mechanic just trying to help out and survive. Stoic assistant with a checkered past. That kind of thing. All scattered across what they call the world's first open world Star Wars game. And that's technically true. Which brings us to the gameplay. Since day one, Ubisoft has called this the first open world Star Wars game. And I'm not going to mix words here. The game is open world, but it's not the kind of open world game that a lot of people would want this type of game to be. Things are split up Starfield style. You can cruise through space or hyper jump to specific regions and planets, but when it comes time to land and explore a planet, you initiate a landing sequence and launch into a small cutscene before jumping out of the ship and going on your way. In my mind, the ultimate truly open world Star Wars game would be No Man's Sky style. No cutscenes, no hidden loading screens, no menus selecting where I want to go or land, just taking off, cruising into the sky and going on adventures. Unfortunately, that's not what Star Wars Outlaws is delivering. But that doesn't mean the gameplay is bad. In a hub city, you walk from merchant to merchant, finding new stuff to buy or chatting with locals to pick up new missions. It's pretty standard stuff, but the mission gameplay is where the game shines. Stealth is definitely rewarded in certain parts of missions. You can sneak up behind enemies to take them out, booby trap alarms, maybe send Nyx out to mess with an enemy while you run up and finish the job. Especially in missions like this one, where Kay is infiltrating the Empire base and the key is to not trigger the alarms and bring the entire base coming towards your landing bay. Overall, the stealth elements are solid. You can tell there might be a little bit of Assassin's Creed sneaking DNA in the execution here, but the combat really gets good when things get wild and you've got to whip out the blasters and grenades. And as a reminder, this is a game being developed by the same team that made Tom Clancy's The Division, so they know a thing or two about solid third-person shooters. During high action sequences, the gunplay feels tight, but it's not too overly challenging. Three or four shots takes out most basic enemies, and aiming for headshots does some extra damage. Along the way, you can pick up enemy weapons to try out that switch things up a little bit while you toss your grenades and make your way towards your objective. For dealing with crowds, Kay also has this slow motion action shot that we saw in the original gameplay reveal. If you've got a group of enemies coming at you, triggering this ability slows down time, lets you mark the enemies, and then take them out one by one before locking back in and pushing forward. It's an ultimate ability that's useful in a pinch and could lead to some cool slow motion moments in the game. And then there's the ship combat. Once again, definitely a kind of Starfield flavor to this kind of thing. But during my previous session, my ship had blasters, missiles, a boost dodge, and a turbo button to get some extra speed. There isn't a ton of innovation here from what I've seen so far, but what it does, it does fairly well. 
You're pushed to aim ahead of moving targets, lock onto ships to fire missiles, and loop back around to take down larger ships with bigger shields and health bars. But between Star Wars Battlefront, No Man's Sky, and Starfield, it really feels like developers have kind of plateaued when it comes to refining space combat anymore. When the dogfighting is done, you can cruise around and scavenge winnings from the wreckage, and along the way you might even find some random encounters with people that need your help and can net you some rewards. I will say, when I was traveling from planet to planet, the gameplay was fine, but it definitely had a dull moment or two. All in all, the space travel and combat experience gets the job done and checks that box off the list of a competent open world Star Wars game. Finally, let's talk about the graphics, the hot topic of the moment, because going back to the IGN first preview, my time with the game looked much, much better. I was playing remotely on a PC, so the PlayStation or Xbox gameplay could tell a very different story, but based on my PC experience, the game looks decently good. Now, mine was an early build of the game and will not be the final version they put out at release, but there was still certainly room for improvement. Facial animations had that uncanny valley effect in cutscenes, and some of the environments and textures just feel kind of lackluster compared to something like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which I think is the gold standard for Star Wars games. That being said, there were also times when this was a legitimately impressive and good-looking game. Some of the other early previews have called out poor explosion quality or lackluster cutscenes, but for me, the action and combat were really the star of the show. During my last hour playtesting the game, a fight was going down on a snowy planet with a courtyard full of enemies. It's in a situation like this that you can really see that experience from the division shine through. The gunplay feels good, the environment looks solid, and it's all around a good time. Are there some other areas of the game that are going to look worse? Sure but I never saw anything that spelled doom for the future of the game during my preview time. So overall, how was Star Wars Outlaws? After four hours with the game, I think there's a good Star Wars game here. The thing that I'm not sure about yet is if this is a great Star Wars game. The characters are good, the world building is good, the gameplay is good, but coming off of games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Ubisoft has a hugely high bar to hit in the world of Star Wars games. Now it might be unrealistic, but let's take out the element of comparing Outlaws to other Star Wars games and just judge it at face value for what it is. And so far, based on my experience, this is every bit of a Ubisoft Star Wars game. And I'm someone who has fun with Ubisoft games. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was fun. Mirage was fun. X Defiant is a good time. At the same time, all of those games have this certain indescribable Ubisoft flavor to them. So far for me, Star Wars Outlaws delivers on a level that hits the bar for telling a new Star Wars story with some solid gameplay coming from Ubisoft. Now the question is if the overall story, side missions, and final gameplay experience can deliver something that general fans enjoy and can climb the ranks to sit beside Fallen Order and Survivor, which are to me the best Star Wars games ever made. But those are my thoughts after four hours with Star Wars Outlaws. And just as a reminder, I just got a vertical slice of the game. Who knows how the plot's going to shape up when the full game drops on August 3rd. 30th, so everything could change depending on how the final version actually feels. And of course, huge thanks to Ubisoft for reaching out and giving me the chance to dive in and give the game a shot. After seeing some gameplay and being part of the conversation, I would love to know what you think down below. How is Star Wars Outlaws shaping up, and is it a game you're going to be playing late summer or early fall? wherever the last day of August falls on your internal calendar. And of course, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, you're new here and you like what you see and what you hear, hit that subscribe button for videos like this every week and gaming news shorts throughout the week to keep you in the loop, and I'll catch you on the next one.